We know that sharp objects and sharp edges pose the number one risk for rope to fail. Now, can you, as a climber, with all the information you get provided with a rope, judge its cut resistance and therefore choose the right rope for the job? Hi, I'm Phil from the Iterate Knowledge Base. In recent episodes, we have looked at the underlying test that we here at Edelreed have come up with in the recent years to reliably judge the cut resistance of a rope. And we have also discussed the first parameter, the diameter, and its influence of the cut resistance of a rope. We put a link to these videos in the description below. Now, in this episode, we want to go further. Now that we know that diameter doesn't necessarily tell you anything about the cut resistance of a rope, we're going to look at other parameters that you as a climber get provided when you buy a brand new rope. So let's look at these parameters. They're a little bit different from a dynamic rope to a static rope as we can see here, but most of them are the same. And now let's pick a few of them that might give you a hint to the cut resistance of a rope and Let's look if that's really the case. So we can take maybe the weight of the rope because you could argue the more material, the better. Um, we can take the sheath um, percentage of a rope because at the end, the sheath is supposed to cover the core of the rope, right? Um, then we will have a look at the strength of the rope because maybe it is the stronger, the better. And at the end, we also in this episode cover the material and have a look at the influence of different materials on the cut resistance. So let's go. For this test today, we're going to look at static ropes. Why static ropes? Because in, in the static rope range, we have most of the diameters that are the same because many devices work with the same diameters, but constructions vary widely. So we have here different Edelreed ropes from the past and the present that all have an 11 millimeter diameter. Now, for those of you who want to dive a little bit deeper into the details of a rope, there are quite big differences between the different constructions. Machine parameters, materials, sheath patterns, different core constructions, different sheath constructions. It's quite a big variety of parameters that you can adjust the rope to. About a few of those, I've also written a knowledge base article, also linked in the description below. All of the tests are carried out on our developed cutting machine that again, you can find the link in the description below. And they are performed at 120 kilograms of load. And we're gonna do 10 tests for each rope and then calculate the mean value of this. We're not gonna mention the model names because this is not what this video is about. So let's look at the first plane results. What you can see here is quite interesting. As you know, all of these ropes are marketed as 11 millimeter ropes and though the cutting values vary greatly, we can see almost a 500% difference between the lowest value and the highest value. And that only underlines our earlier statement that diameter is not really a good parameter to judge the cut resistance of a rope. Okay, so are there any other values that might give you a hint about the cut resistance of the rope? Let's next look at the strength of a rope. As mentioned, maybe it is the stronger the better. So again, we take all the values that we have measured for all the different rope models and hold them against the strength of the individual rope models. You can see here in the graph that there might be a little bit of a tendency, but you can also see that there are some values that differ although they have the same minimum breaking strength. And you can even see that higher minimum breaking strength result in a lower cutting value. So also the strength of the rope doesn't really give you a good hint of the cut resistance of a rope. We said next we're gonna look at the weight of the rope. Again, maybe the argumentation is the more material I have, the better the cut resistance. Let's look at the values here again and hold them against the grams per meter for each ropes. Again, we can't really see here a clear correlation that the more material, the better. You see that there are values that differ greatly, that have a high cutting value, although they weigh much less than another given rope. And you have different cutting values for the same weight of the rope. So it's not something very reliable either. We said next, we're gonna look at the sheath percentage of a rope. 
Um, again, argumentation here could be the sheath is supposed to protect the rope, so the more sheath I have, the better it should be, right? Again, same principle. We look at the cut values and hold them against the sheath percentages of each of those rope models. And we have to once again see that we can't really see a correlation between the sheath percentage and the cut values of those ropes. Higher values for lower sheath percentages and lower values for higher sheath percentages, different values for the same sheath percentages, not a good parameter either. So, so far we know nothing. And that's not so cool, I think. Remember, we're talking about the number one documented risks of ropes failing. And so far, we haven't found any specification that really gives us a reliable hint about how cut resistant a given rope is. And then there are the big buzzwords, Aramid, Kevlar, Dyneema, all of those cool materials that sound super good, sound high strength, sound super cut resistant. But are they really? Now, that might be an episode by itself probably, because it's not so trivial to really measure this, I can tell you. What we do know is though, that these high strength fibers very often have a positive impact on the cut value of a given rope. Though, remember, it is only one component of the whole rope constructions. And I want to give you an example for this now. Here, we look at three different static rope models that differ in construction a little bit as well, um, but use very different materials. So here we have a seven millimeter accessory cord made with a polyamide core and 100% aramid sheath. Here we have material wise almost the same construction, but a 10.5 millimeter static rope with a polyamide core and 100% aramid sheath. And, and we're gonna look at this rope here, which is constructed with a polypropylene core and 100% polyester sheath. Now let's look at those values and we're gonna amp up the load on the machine to 160 kilos here to make the results better comparable and also take the best ropes of the research static ropes there as a comparison. Now what we can see is that the 10.5 millimeter static rope with 100% aramid sheath is clearly better than the best rope that we had here at 160 kilograms. But what is interesting now is that when we look at the cat value of the seven millimeter accessory cord here, so remember 3.5 millimeter thinner than the static ropes, it is even better than the 10.5 millimeter static rope. So this only shows that Aramid could be a positive influence on the cat value of a rope, but the construction and all the parameters in the construction, this is what really counts. And maybe to underline this even more, we're gonna look at this rope. Remember, it's no aramid, polypropylene and polyester rope. And we can see that this even has a higher cut value than our seven millimeter accessory cord with 100% aramid sheath without any aramid whatsoever. So again, you as a climber, you don't have any really information to judge the cut resistance of a rope. And that is a problem, I think. But the message here is that you have to understand that a rope consists of so many parameters that all alternate the characteristics of a rope. And it's always a trade-off. You can, of course, optimize for cut resistance, but you will probably lose some other characteristics, like, for example, handling. At the end, there is not the perfect rope for everything. You have to choose the right rope for the job. And what also should have become clear is that we urgently need a test to quantify the cut resistance of a rope. Again, the number one risks for rope to fail. And I hope at least this is an important message.